good evening. Gosh, I'm very white. She is white. How are you this evening? I hope all is well. What a beautiful Sunday evening it is. Here. Anyway, I don't know if it is a beautiful Sunday there, where you are. Um, welcome to live stream. Um, I just tell you how it works if this is your first time to live stream. If, if you've been on live stream before, then you'll have heard this many times before. And uh, I'm sure you'll be bored with this introduction again. But basically the way it works is that um, I do these streams every Sunday at 6 p.m. French time. And you can log on to my YouTube channel and you'll find me there. Normally for the first 10 minutes, I just have like a screen playing, waiting for people to join, like 10, 15 minutes. And then after that, um, I do a little introduction like this. And then I do silent sitting for um, like 20, 30 minutes. And then I do the talk starting maybe like quarter to or 10 to seven. Um, and if you want to ask questions, you can ask questions through Skype. My Skype address is LisaCairns12. You can find that in the box below. And um, you can either write the questions or phone in. If you want to phone in, leave me a message, a typed message saying, call me. And um, please make sure that you've got good internet connection and you've got a headset with a microphone in it. You can just use the, mic the headset and the microphone that came with your phone. Most probably it doesn't have to be super fancy, but it just stops the rotation and echoing sound. What else? Um, these talks are free of charge. The only thing that I do ask if you've got time and if you're logged in is if you could put a thumbs up for them. Um, if you don't like all the meditation and the waiting and um, these intro bits, there's another channel called Video Clips Clips Dash Lisa Cairns. And there's a gentleman that edit, edits all the videos on there and um, uploads them to YouTube and gives them all titles about the subject matter, uh, which you might like. What else is there to say? If you want to join one of my events, the next event I'm doing is in Spain. It's a retreat from the 23rd of May to the 30th of May, 30th of May. And it's in the south of Spain. And what do I do for the retreats? You can find this all out on my website. Um, but basically I talk about non-duality most probably half the day. And then I do like exercises, chakra exercises and different things, dancing and chakra breathing to help um, relax the person. Don't we e c? Don't we e e? Ooh 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 ooh! I've got a little e e here. She's um. She's just having a little dance there to the rhythm of life. I don't know if you can see her because she's black, and everything down here seems black. My jumper is black. There she is. E e. Say hello. Daughter. There, there she is. She's like coming out of the blackness. It's just like all of us in life. Coming out of the blackness. I've got my coffee boiling as well, if you can't hear. Duke, 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 duke. Boo, boo. Danka. Danka, danka. Danka, danka. Uh. Yes, I know you're there, you see. I know you're there. I know you're there, I love you too, and I know you want more food. Um, yes, so that is everything. Um, yes, you're also welcome to book one-to-one -one sessions. Um, uh, I currently booked up till June, so if you want to book sessions and you want to um, like explore a particular subject, it's best to book a couple in the row. Although I do have a waiting list and sometimes things do get cancelled. So you also could try writing and getting put on the waiting list if you want to do that. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Woof. Woof. That's it. That's all the food you're getting. 
Well, I'm just, I'm, I'm just going to give her some biscuit out in the lounge to get rid of her. One moment. Get rid of EC. Uh, yeah, so now, next, what we shall do is some sitting in silence for absolutely no reason. Not because we like it or don't like it, just for no reason at all. Because if you hadn't noticed, that's also the way life is working. Life is appearing for absolutely no reason at all. We're just filling in the gaps, telling ourselves all these reasons as to why life's happening and why I'm doing certain things. It's because of this, it's because of that, it's because of this and that. And really it's because of nothing, nothing. So basically our practice here today is to sit and meditate for no reason at all. So when people, when your wife walks past and you're sitting there with your iPad and your headphones in like, she says, what are you doing? What are you doing, love? What are you doing, sweetie pie? You say, nothing. I'm meditating for nothing. I'm doing the practice of nothing. Nothing at all. Now, for some people, that might be a bit confusing because... Some people might think that if you attempt to do nothing, you're still doing something, which is an understandable idea and problem, but nope, it's really nothing. You, you can just sit still and just sit there and let anything happen. Your thoughts, your ideas, your feelings, your sensations. If you find that this is really painful, I've been meditating for many years now, so... I'm very comfortable sitting in silence, but if you find it incredibly painful, um, which I vaguely remember when I first started, like the chaos and the agony of it. Um, and if you do find it really chaotic and agonizing, you can do certain things to help settle you down. One is counting your breath. So when you breathe in, you count one. And you breathe out and then you can two when you breathe in and out, three on your next in breath and you do that all the way up to ten and then once you get to ten you start again down at one so you go one to ten and it's called the mindfulness of breathing so you just count every time the breath goes in and touches your nose and you follow it through your body and out and then two and the, and the great thing about it if you practice that you'll realize that it's not as easy as it seems because you go into automatic and then suddenly you're on like 962 and you're like oh bollocks i was meant to start again but it's it's not a mistake if you do that it's just it's just tra training to calm down the mind the other thing you can do knowing that you're not the doer and that doing happens and that anything that i say is simply a prescription and not a description Oh, no, sorry. It's simply a description and not a prescription. Um, the other thing you can do is moving your attention to the I am. And some might be like, but Lisa, what is the I am? It's very simple. The I am is what's always there, what never moves and never leaves. And it's the sense of being that you exist. I am. But it's not I am Lisa. I am Roger. I am Andreas. It is just I am. I am prior to all of that, not I am rich or I am poor or I am sexy or I have lots of big toys or I have a dog or I am special or I am bad, I am ugly. It is just I am prior to all of it. Doot, 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 happy? So now we're just going to sit and do nothing. As you can tell, I'm hyper. I've been for a bike ride and 
hyper. So I don't know if I'll get to be able to sit in meditation for a long time, but we should try.
Hello. I spun around. Oop. Sorry. Bang, bang. Just to wake you up out of your meditation. Bang, bang. Bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang. Okay. <coughs> okay, so what are we talking about? We're talking about non-duality. Um, so, as some of you might be aware, some of you might not know this, but what non-duality means is not to that the source of this life isn't made up from two independent things isn't that amazing <laughs> isn't that wonderful so even though it seems like we're looking at multiple things so we're looking at the table the work top the curtain the oven the lisa the chair the wall the tiles the bottles, the cutlery, the cups, the fridge. So even though it seems like we're looking at multiple things, we're actually not looking at any single thing. <laughs> that sounds so complex for the mind. Um, so the Buddha used to, to say this in one of his famous sutras, that the whole world is made from... I mean, the translation is atoms, but it must be something like tiny particles because I doubt they had that word 2,500 years ago. So, um, so, he's, so he basically already said it. So if you look from a scientific point of view, you can understand that, that we're made from building blocks and our, our tiniest building block that we've discovered in life is maybe quark. Maybe we've discovered a smaller particle than that, but I think it's maybe a quark. Um, so you could say, like, we're made of atoms, we're made of these tiny little balls that are laid, lined up in different ways, giving the appearance that we're individual things, but we're not actually individual things. And you could also think about it as if you got a microscope out and you looked into our arm or into the computer or into the table, um, you would never be able to find the edge of anything. They would always go into smaller and smaller particles. Like everything's always broken down into something else. I feel like I'm not giving that a very accurate scientific explanation. I can't say that science is my strong point. But you can see that Everything is interconnected. So there's, there's nothing that's separate. Everything is related to each other and is transforming into one another. It just is happening at quicker or slower speeds. So like right now, the air is mag magnificently transforming into oxygen for the body, into breath, and then it's being pumped out something else. But again, can't give you all the scientific names of everything that's happening. But if you take water, okay, this is an easier way for me to say it. So if you take water, it's now being transformed into body. And then eventually it'll be transformed into we, and we will be manure for something else to grow, or fertilizer for something else to grow. 
And it's the same with everything. It's always like moving from one thing to another. Like if you speeded up this world, this universe, and looked at it and fast forward, you would just see constant growth and destruction and growth and destruction, but it's all growing out of itself. So one thing is destroyed and then another thing grows from that, which is really miraculous. Can you get like a, a bigger love story than that, that everything around us is made from ourself and there's nothing that, born, that is born or died. And this is a problem in our language, is we're always talking in start and finish, in beginning and end, whereas in actuality there's no beginning and end and there's no start and finish. There is constant movement from one thing to another. So then this brings up an neurosis in the human, where the human thinks, oh, I am going to die, I am alive and I am going to die. But who is going to die? If we're made up of tiny, tiny, tiny little particles that are making up everything and just changing positions to give different forms and shapes, then who is going to die? What is going to die? But the person like identifies with being this body, with being a form, with being a name, with being your material possessions, with being your sexuality, your family identity, it identifies with all these things and then thinks, this is me. This is who I am, and I've got to keep this. I've got to maintain being me, and I've got to show my me to other people and how special I am, and I've got to be someone in this world. And this is, this is like trying to run up a stream because it's a total illusion. Like, and it's, it's living under a false premise. It's living in a lie because there is no separate you that is born and going to die. There's a character that arises with the body, just like the radiator's got the character of being a radiator and the... The curtain's got to the character of being a curtain, and Lisa's got the character of being Lisa, and you've got the character of being Sally, Dick, or Harry. Sally met Harry. So you, um, but that's not who you are. It creates this seekum, seeking momentum. So it creates this dynamic where you are always seeking to be something. And you always feel like from trying to be something, this isn't a conscious game, but you feel like you've lost something. And then from that feeling of losing something, you're seeking to gain something. So there's always this seeking game in time of looking for something else, like where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Is it under the keyboard? Oh, that's a bit of food. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And everyone in, in humanity is like desperately looking for something, but they don't really know what they're looking for, but they think they do. So they're like, more money. Most of it's more money, more money, more money, which is obvious because money is survival. And if you don't have money, then you... In some societies, in most societies, you just go on the dole. Or benefits. Family looks after you or government but it's connected in the mind. So most of the time it's about money and being loved. These are the two very strong momentums, but they're kind of similar because if you're not loved, you're kicked out of society, you can't earn money and you die. So if you, if you fuck up and you do something really awful and everyone in society hates you, then how can you ever get a job and earn money to survive? So they're kind of like got a similarity to them, but they're like opposite ends. So. Yeah, well, not opposite ends, just different positions. So the seek, 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 seek. And then it creates a tension and a stress in the body and you build up all these lies. So you're kind of uh, living in a lie, a constant lie. So it's like living with someone that's gaslighting you, but you're living in a like whole entire society that's gaslighted is you all believe that you're going to get to the end of the ro rainbow and find this pot of gold and finally be able to relax. But by the time that you get to retirement and you've got enough gold to relax, you're so stressed from having doing that all those years, you can't relax and you don't enjoy anything. You're just a grumpy old git. Like, where's my dinner? They never put anything good on TV. They don't make bed sheets like they used to.
So then you don't enjoy getting to the end of the rainbow because you're all strung out from having worked for 60 years trying to get to the end of the rainbow. So what to be done, eh? <laughs> so then you try all the therapies in the world and then you try all the spiritual seeking and finally you're like, ah, oh, fuck it. We'll look into non-duality. It's like the last, the last port of call. Like you've tried everything to be happy. You tried maybe all the money, all the sex, all the girlfriends, all the boyfriends, all the kids. You've tried money. You've tried expensive holidays. You can never find it. You've tried therapy, spirituality, cults. And now you're like, let's try non-duality. Let's see if there's anything in that. And what does non-duality offer you? Nothing, which is also everything. Nothing is everything and everything is nothing. And everyone's like, oh man, it's so crazy making this non-duality. What does that mean? It means who you are is what's happening. Love is. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Love is. Love is. Ding, ding, ding. You can't beat that, can you? Love is. It's the only freedom in this world. There is no other freedom in this world. Nothing, everything else won't end. I'm sorry to say it, but your karmas won't end your... I mean, there's always the possibility that I just haven't arrived at that place and I don't know, but I suspect your dynamics won't end, your karmas won't end. I think it's impossible. These bodies are like got genetic predisposition and then they've had years and years of social conditioning. So if it pisses you off, people being really noisy in your apartment, then more than likely that's always going to be a contention for you. Is that the right word, contention? A source of contention, I think that's the right way to say it. But you never know, and this is mysterious and magical. So you're going to have a tendency of ways of being, but there is this freedom that's beyond that, that feels free in all things. That's not about an emotional stability. It's not like, it's not about a mental stability. It's not about a behavioral stability. And the person's like, oh fuck, but I really want to be a better person. How can it not be about being a better person? I want to fight with my partner less. I want to be nicer to my kids, but it's not about that. If it was about that, it would be conditioned and it would be about reconditioning yourself and therapy and that's okay, but it's not. Non-duality is not a thing and yet it's everything and it's the birthright of all things. It's the birthright of the mass murderer, of the paedophile, of the saint, um, of the fairly good person, the average good person, the person with low morality. It's for everybody. The dinosaurs, the sharks, the crocodiles, the bunnies, the deers. It's for everything. It's the birthright of all things. It's not like in Christianity where it's like, you have to work really hard in order to get this. It's right here. The problem is, is what's happening most of the time is the person is focused on me, which is limited and is contracted. The me feels like a contracted energy inside the body and it feels limiting and there's so much focus on that and you can't say that this is a shift in focus but it seems to be an energetic shift that happens from being separate to not being separate but yet the character still acts itself out it's not about the character becoming perfection even though that would be nice it's not about that and and that's like the biggest surrender in the end is is allowing the character to be what it is in its perfection and supposed imperfections. I mean, it's always polite for your neighbors to, to, to aspire to recondition yourself. It's always polite for your partner, your kids, your neighbors, your dogs, your cats, to aspire to become a better person. We, like, 
that's a great motto for daily living, but that's still got fuck all, fuck all to do with non-duality. But I always like to say that because, you know, I meet so many narcissistic personalities in non-duality. It really does attract the narcissists, I have to say. So I always like to say this just to try and balance it. It's like the narcissists, they don't go to therapy. They don't go to like um, spiritual cults or anything. They're like non-duality. I am God. And then they set up a YouTube channel and start telling on everyone how they are God. Um, so I always like to say that in case there's any narcissists live listening. And now all the people that aren't narcissists will be like, oh God, I think I'm a narcissist. I think it, that might be, she might be talking about me. And if you had those thoughts, I assure you, you're not a narcissist. If you didn't have those thoughts, more than likely you are. <laughs> so, the, so then the ones that didn't have it still are like, so maybe somebody was only half listening and they didn't think it, they're like, oh no, I'm a narcissist, that they're concerned, the people that aren't. And the narcissist is still like, I could have her if I wanted to. Yeah, just I need to send her a sexy email, you know. Tell her how enlightened I am and I could have her. <laughs> Yes. Enlightenment is like um, the holy grail for narcissists or the burning fire for the moths. No, no, actually forget that one. It's like the holy grail. So, well, I think that's the end of the introduction. <laughs> and um, know that, like some people, um, in, in all different cultures, you find that um, they have like different humours and different jokes and stuff. And... Um, and just in case, like, because of language difference or um, cultural difference, sometimes I am joking about things I say and I'm being sarcastic, so I might say something, but I'm being sarcastic or I mean the opposite and I'm just being silly. So don't take everything that I say, like, really seriously, because it might be a joke, but your culture might not perceive that as a joke. And I'm not even being sarcastic when I say that, I'm being serious. <laughs> it sounds like I'm being really sarcastic. When I say that. Okay, good evening. So if you'd like to write a question now, you can write a question. If you'd like to call in, then just write saying, please call me and make sure you've got your headset ready and you're ready to go when it's working with Skype. Hello, this is George Bartlett. Hello, George Bartlett. Hello, Lisa and Khaleesi. I think we're all narcissists. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh, do you now, George? You're Great Britain, George. Yeah, maybe it could be. To an extent. We've all we've got all got narcissistic tendencies, let's put it like that, maybe. Hi there. Is there a live stream today? For some reason I get an error when I press oh, oh. very good. Milko, yes, you've got it. Yek, duck, duck, duck. Yes, there is a live stream. Hello, Alango. Hi, Isabel. Love you, Lisa. Love you too, Isabel. Fatima. Hey, Fatima. Dear sweet Lisa. Hey, I'm so glad to see your shining face after a while. Oh, nice to see you, Fatima. Hey, Lisa. I just want to say thank you for these one, your wonderful madness. Love this. Oh, thanks. Enjoy. Yeah. That's sweet. Wonderful madness. 
Hi Sue, hi Lisa. Lovely to spend time with you this beautiful evening. And you Sue, thank you. Hi Lisa, I'm wondering whether I can call you tonight. I feel my heart chakra is about to burst. I've been asking it questions what, to, what it's trying to say. I don't know what you kind of questions to ask. Yes, we can speak about the heart chakra. Hey, Sue. Hey. Yeah, good, thanks. Can I just get you to turn off your video? So, um, just one second, just let me do something before I help you, one sec. De, de, do, do. There you go. Um, so basically, if you put your little mouse, what, what are you on? Are you on an iPad, a, a computer? A so if you just put your little mouse down to the bottom, you'll see at the bottom of, of my um, screen, there is a camera, a microphone and a phone. Just click the camera. There we go, perfect, thank you. Just so, just so it doesn't, take up my internet. Oh, hang on, you're not coming in. One second. I just got to get you coming in on Skype. Oh, no, it's me. I've got to do it. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Can you just speak so I can just see? Yeah, it's working. Yeah. Cool. Fab. Can we hear? Can we? Yes. And you can hear me okay? Yes. Nice. Fabulous. I'm talking with you on Saturday, but because I was talking to the universe and I was saying, oh, my heart chakra feeling wants to burst. Yeah. What burst in, is, it, is it like painful or is it pleasurable? Well, it's been, what it is, I've been doing on, I've been listening to you for a long time and, you know, I've spoken to you before and yeah, I, remember, I, get yeah. to, I get to places where your music to the soul but because I've been going through a few things at the minute, there's, I feel everything is rising to the surface. I feel mm. as if something's trying to push out. Yeah, like energetically, yeah. It's pushing out, and I want it to be pushed out. I've surrendered <laughs> and said, push out. So I'm asking, what, what do you want from me? What, what is it I need? And I just don't, I feel as if it's hiding. Yeah. As if I'm asking it questions, and I feel... Yes, I just don't know what it is, and I think yeah. it's all patterning, you know, like, um, yeah. obviously, like you've been talking tonight about money, and, you know, stuff like that, I think it's all programming, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we can, so if you just close your eyes, I always find it best to close yes. your eyes in doing this, but just, oh, if yes. at any point, um, this is crossing your boundaries, you know, because there's other people listening, so if I at don't any care. point... You don't care, okay. but if any point you I, feel... If it helps anybody, I'm happy. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just it your first anybody. name, so people will never be able to find yeah. you. Yeah, um, it doesn't matter. So, um, yeah, but if you do, at any time you want to stop, if it gets too much or, or anything, okay. you're welcome to say. Thank you. And I, we, we might not get anywhere, it's just an investigation. No. Yeah, so, well, I'm talking to you on Saturday anyway, so yeah, maybe yeah. we can start and then finish on Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So just put your okay. attention into your heart, and if it, if you can't feel much, or if you can't stay there, just rub it with your hand a little. So you can yeah. just give it a bit of a massage, and make sure you're nice and comfortable. Oh, I am. And just keep your attention in in it. Right. And just take some breaths. And does it have any emotion or feeling or, or um, you can also describe what it feels like energetically, like anything that's there? It feels as, as if, um, I would say it's hurting, but it wants to push out. Yeah. It's, it's, it's just, yeah, it's just, I think, I don't know, it's, it's very hard to explain, but it's been, because I've done a lot and I've eased off and then it comes back. Yeah. And then I watch 
watch my thinking and my patterning and then it's something wants to put there's something wants to be heard and I don't know whether whoever it is, me or whatever, stopping it, I don't know. Yeah. But it's come to the point as if it's really ready to I want to say awakening, but I don't want that to think I'm it's I'm egotistic or anything. It's just I feel as if something just wants to birth through me. Yeah, yeah. That often happens with the chakras, especially in the heart area. Because yeah. most of the time, most of the life, people's hearts are closed. So often when I work with people, they don't really know what love is. Some people's it's opening and closing throughout their life. So when they're with someone they love, it opens. But sometimes people yeah. it never opens and they don't know what the experience of love is. Right. And all, all feelings aren't because of the outside world. All feelings are inside you, like on the, on the human level, or inside your body. And everything that you experience is your thoughts and feelings playing out. So say if yeah. you see like a beautiful sunset, you associate it with the beautiful sunset, but it's just that your body and mind is conditioned or the way it's made up is to respond to that. And there might be a love feeling to that. Or say if you're in love with someone, like that's your mm. particular body mind having responses. And each chakra, so you might already know this, but I just say it for other people. Yeah. So each chakra has... I think of them like traffic lights and they have like different positive feelings and negative feelings. And often what happens is that we're often in the negative feelings of our chakras because mm. it's the nature of being separate because, and it's nature of identifying with the mind because the mind is always looking for problems to fix. And when you begin mm. to think that you're a thought, so you think that you're in your name, you think you're your action or your past or future, then you become a problem. And your happiness is down to your mind. Your happiness is down to your behaviour. Yeah. So, um, so then yeah. we've, we have all these different traffic lights that are going on and off, dependent on what we experience in the outside world. And I also think that what we experience in the outside world is also dependent on what we think and feel. Like I think mm. that um, the way that this, manif this life manifests on the human level is a projection of your brain. So if you feel like a victim your whole life and hard done by or poor, then that's what your reality will look like. It's not yeah. you manifesting, it's just the pattern of that body-mind mechanism manifesting. There is no you that's manifesting. There is just the pattern mm. of that body-mind manifesting. So when you begin mm. to change your mind, change your chakras and change your attitude on the human level towards life, your life begins to to transpire as well and normally in order to do that you need to have an awakening you need to see that you aren't your chakras you aren't your feelings mm. you aren't your thoughts you aren't your ideas you aren't any of that and the reason that you need to see that is because that gives you the space or that gives the distance to be able to be really honest with yourself about what you're thinking and feeling it is it's too difficult to see that you're very hateful or spiteful in certain moods if you're really identified with being you. Because the idea of being a hateful or spiteful individual in certain moods or having done those types of things is too painful when you're identified and it, your story won't allow you to go there. So there has to be a certain amount of disidentification in order to be able to see these dark shadows of ourselves. Mm. So um, they need to, to, to go hand in hand. And so often awakening to non-duality often entails also um, an energetic, in the uh, energetic awakening in the chakras as well. So the body-mind awakens or mm. changes and shifts, whichever way you want to put it. Mm. So, um, so you're right. So when, when you are having these shifts and when you have like, worked on yourself a lot and seen non-duality then often things like your heart chakra like really opens. But that's not non-duality. That's a heart chakra opening on the human level, and that's super beautiful. And it's really, um, it's really amazing like, um, mm. for it to open. And it's love. Yeah. Like it's, on its, when it's really open, it's love. When it's really closed... The, the pit of the heart chakra is not being loved. Yeah. The absence of love. I've, 
I've had a change in my situation, you see, so it's all coming together. Uh, it's, I've had a change of situation. I mean, I've been on my own for like 18 years, bringing up my twins. Yeah. I've done all that at university. They're doing brilliant and what have you. But now I'm in a situation where I was in, um, and I know what it is, it's quite been me. You know, I was in a situation where my, my mortgage was paid and now I'm in a situation where I'm in a, a flat and I'm paying rent and I'm worried how I'm going to survive. And I know from the bottom of my heart I will survive, but it's really, really rising as if it's challenging me now, thinking, ha, 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 you think you know, you you think you trust, and da, 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 and it's really, because I'm in the situation now, because all, you know, all along I'm like, you know, I'm safe, I'm fine, I'm everything, but, it, but it's really now, yes. let's see how much you trust me. Yeah, so, um, so hang on, you said your mortgage was paid? Yeah. But you, you moved into a flat then? But I moved into a rented flat because my ex bought me out. I and because I'm on my own and where I lived, it, 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 and I, I just work part-time, so I couldn't get another mortgage. Why would if I moved in a different direction? But I needed to be in my work, so, you know, and I'm thinking, how am I going to survive now? Even though i got money in the bank now, but you know what I'm saying? And that's, yeah. where, that's what's rising in my heart chakra. Yeah. So let's just go into that feeling of not surviving. So what happens, like say if you can't pay your rent? Like what's that what's that image for you if you can't pay your rent? Well, if I can't pay my rent, I mean I mean like we've been, like you were talking about earlier on, then you get help where I live, where they help to pay your rent. Oh yeah. Mm. So what's um so um, so what? why does your mind fear that so much of not being able to pay your rent? That comes stems from my parents. And, and but, so you've got, you get help if you can't mm. pay your rent, but, um, mm. but um, there must be something else you believe. Do you believe that you wouldn't get the help or something? I think there's a sense of shame. I feel as if I failed. Okay, so if you can't pay pay your rent, it means that you failed. Yeah. And what does what does failure mean to you? Like if like if you In, failed, inadequacy. Is it, sorry. Inadequate. Inadequate, and is it the way that people would look at you, or is it how you'd look at yourself? It's how I look at myself. Yeah. So actually, I don't know if this is so much a fear about money at the moment, as it seems mm. like it's more a fear of of not being loved. Because if you're inadequate, it like inadequacy feelings are about shame and are about not being loved. That you're not good enough to be loved. Yeah. Like the, and that means that if you're not good enough to be loved, society will kick you out. So it's not so much you fearing that the money. Or run out it's more a fearing of that you failed so that's slightly different mm -hmm. from the fear of the money so this is yeah. about shame more shame i don't know if you can relate it to that a shameful yeah. feeling yeah so so then what you could do when you're by yourself you don't have to do it now you can do it now if you feel like it but this might get very personal we could also do it on saturday yeah, yeah. You, you could then relate it back to situations where you felt shame in your life like where you felt like your failure or inadequate and you can go back all the way to childhood and just see the different times and just let it burn like really burn like the phoenix burning in the fire like really going yeah. for it in the ch chest so that you sort of evoking these images sometimes it's easier to do with someone so i can do it with you on saturday like just yeah. and if you say it to someone it's like almost like getting it out of your system it's like popping a spot like showing yeah. everything yeah like, um and just going over like all the things that you're deeply shamed about being inadequate and then eventually bringing it back. So I'm telling you a lot more now because we're in a live stream. But if we're in a one to one session when we've got more time, I will try to mm. get you to then bring it back to 
um, to this feeling of not being loved because that's the bottom of the heart chakra. Yeah. You're alone, that you're not loved, you're alone, and you're, you're alone and abandoned. And then it's that you're separate from everything else. Mm. Can you relate to that at all? I, I can understand it from the, the person's perspective, but it, yet I do know and I felt pure love through my body. Yeah. 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 I've, I I have I've been I've been in I've listened to you and it's just I've had it running through my body yeah. the feeling yeah that's beautiful is it's absolutely amazing it, yeah. it really is and I it's it's just yeah it's yeah. just this is I, what, this what is happened? super this is I'm sure this is the you know the character yeah no and it, and basically when you're waking up and shifting and all these things are happening you have something called flip-flopping mm -hmm. where something That's opens it. and then it closes and then it opens a bit more and it closes and it opens a bit more mm -hmm. like it's it's um you know it's it's uh it's sort of flipped up so it doesn't mean like that that's your permanent way of being or that it's always closed it's just a phase that's of something coming out like you say and actually when it does come out afterwards then it will be really divine it's like doing exercise, yeah. you know, when you do really like intense yeah. exercise, you feel fantastic afterwards and when these things do come out. But and I'm, I'm, consciously, put... I'm consciously Sorry. aware as well because everything you feel, you create. Yeah. And while I'm feeling this, this is what I'm going to create. I'm going to bring yeah. more fear in, yeah. knowing that underneath all that, I know that I'm a true, you know, I'm being of, yeah. of source or whatever name you want to give it, you know. But... Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and um, what I would like to do with you, but I'll, I'll do it um, in the one-to-one -one session, is I want yeah. I want you to go more into that feeling of failure and like relating it to your parents and relating it to society, yeah. like really going into it. Yeah. It would be really, like um. Yeah. Like I think I it would be really beautiful to go into that energy. That's what I want you to 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 re. I think it needs to be pulled out. I think yeah. as I'm talking, it, I need somebody. You know, when you say you find your teacher to pull it out. Yeah. I need to be pulled out and have yeah. all the, you know. So I'm hopefully on Saturday. I thought if I get a tap in a bit of it today, so come Saturday now, then we can. Yeah. And what you can do before it. Saturday is just reflect on that feeling of shame. So yeah. normally in the heart area, the feelings that we feel mm. are like shame. We feel guilt. Uh, abandonment, lack of love, mm -hmm. and it is lack of trust as well, because lack of trust is also like um, a sense of not being loved, like abandoned by God. Mm. Like so, it is. It is also that, like that, that God is abandoning you, or God is leaving you. Yeah, that's what that's what it is. I'm, I'm just yeah. saying it now. I can hear it. That's what it is. It's like as if you, I know, I, I know from the bottom of my heart, the other part of my heart, yeah. I'm just using an example that he hasn't, but for some reason, there's that voice saying, ha, 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 as if it's really, really, oh, you've been abandoned. Da, 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 yeah. da, da. I'm thinking, no. Oh. Yeah. And, and, it, and mm. it's also like a bit, it sounds like a bit of a spikeful voice as well. Yes. Like, um, like, look at you, you've failed, you've been abandoned, you've got it all yeah. wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you thought you were da da da, you know. Yeah. How could you trust? How could yeah. you trust in something that you haven't seen? Anything that comes up with, I'm just finding words, you know. Yeah. But, um, yes, yeah, it's funny. <laughs> it's really strange how it yeah. works. Because and I it's love so, it's, it's so true. personal. This energy, like, this energy could have come from your parents, you know, you could have genetically oh. born with this energy like it could have been for many generations in your family line like it's absolutely impersonal these energies and it also could just be a collective you know human feeling like this is the great thing about the non-dual and the waking up part is seeing how impersonal all of this is yeah. and it's all the same like all like i'm sure there's so many people listening now that can relate to what you say and can feel it in their heart and know exactly what you mean. It's in the collective, isn't it? And yeah. you feel it. Yeah. And the more and the more more you feel it, the more energy I'm giving to it, the more it wants to get yeah. it's getting bigger, bigger and I'm like, ah yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Yeah. 
Oh, well, maybe that's all we do for today. And finish on because I'm a jolly person by heart, by yeah. by studying position. They say, be careful yeah. how you think. Because I was uptown yesterday, I lived by the seaside, yeah. and I was walking down, and I'm always consciously aware of how you say things and everything. And I was walking with my friends up the street, and the wind was howling. <laughs> and I was I always, I, I, you know, I work with it, blah, 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 and I was going up the street, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, I've never known it. It's so powerful. Anything could fall on you, and a piece of fish from the building fell right on my head. <laughs> I give you a great hack, and all my friends were like, oh, my God, you just said that. And I said, oh, my God, that came to me. I called it into my head. <laughs> it was mad. Anyway, yes. I was just out and everything and then that was fine my daughter said mum I think we better go don't be rude she said I don't want to be rude she said but you are a woman of a certain age and I think we should have you checked out <laughs> but it's so funny but you've got to be careful yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking what are you trying to say to me and do you, know, do you know what, at the moment, like talking about this, is that I think that um, humanity is doing this with the cor cor coronavirus, or however you say it. Oh, like, it's, yes. like it's like we, we're self prophesizing it, like people are so fixated on it. And I know that it's because humanity has now got it in its collective consciousness and everyone's afraid of it. It's just going to bring it on more and more. We're all going to get it now. It's all the media putting it out. And I say yeah. to people, I say, Friend, you know this. Look, look, don't watch the telly. It's yeah, weird. Everyone's doing anything. talking about it now. Even even us are talking about it as well. But everyone is talking about it, and yeah, it's, it's 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 now in the collective consciousness. Yeah, and that's right. It's an energy. You give yeah. more to that energy, and it's going to create it. Yeah. It's everything, and I'm just like, oh, for God's sake. And um, but then you go ask for people to wake up, really, isn't it? It's, it's for people to to yeah to see it for themselves because I work in pharmacy and people die of flu, normal flu, more than one the the amount of people that have died of corona corona or whatever it's called. I know and I don't properly understand what the panic is. Like, okay. when, like when I read like I try me and my partner tried to read about it yet as as, as to why it's so awful. And I know that it's awful like it's killing a percentage of people, but we couldn't notice what the big difference was from flu. And oh, except they don't have a vaccine for it yet or something. Yeah. Intuitively, I sense that there's something behind it for somebody to put it out in the media. There's other things going on behind the doors yeah. that there's a politics going on that yeah. we don't know. Let's put this out. Let's put this on the media yeah. now. And we do other things that we can do and nobody would notice yeah. what we are doing. Yeah. Yes. It. And I was like, oh, for God's sake. But the, it is, it's amazing how the universe is there for a reason. It's there, yeah. you know, we're, we're puppets on a string you know, at the end of the day. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. It really is amazing how the universe works. Yeah. And is your head all right uh, today after you? I guess it's me. I stayed with my daughters last night. I slept with my, my granddaughter. She was looking after me. She's five. And, um, yeah, it woke up in mean, his I got fortunately my hair comes is quite long and it comes over my face. But um it's great. But I was like I did I was in shock more than anything. I was I went inside here and I was laughing inside to the universe. I couldn't show my friends. I think but I mean I think I'm nutty anyway, like you said, that's why I love you so much. You you sing my song, you know, everything you do, I, it's just amazing. Because um it's when I say, well, we are, I created that and say, what are you talking about? <laughs> no, you can't say. <laughs> so, how can you create that? I said, well, that's part of me, I said. Do you know that? That's, that's that. That's the way it is. Everything in my reality is, is everything is us. Yeah. We created everything. So, um, no, yeah. That's funny. So, yeah, it no. is. It's amazing. So um, my heart feels a bit better now after Justin Jim. I think I've had some of your energy in my heart because you only have to talk, you see, and that shifts things. Oh, nice. Yeah. Looking forward today. Yeah. Oh, thank you for calling, too. That was very nice to speak with you. you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is 
like you know with technology so we'll be able to do you know on saturday will i be able, will we be able to see each other yeah we can see each other i just don't do it on um on yeah because it takes up too much of my internet with the streaming so i just don't do it on the live but yeah on saturday on the one-to-one -one, we can see each other can't wait. <laughs> nice yeah nice sue thanks for calling in yeah yeah bye bye thank you so much doop 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 okay hello dear lisa nice to see you hello simon hello nat hi lisa just wanted to report that the last conversation we had last week about my solar plexus helped me release something deep trauma and see the love around it thank you and big love oh that's fantastic nat that's really great Hi, Nick. Yes, love is. It's only everything. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, Lisa. Your kitchen is a culinary delight. Culinary. I can't see the word suddenly. Culinary. Yes, thank you, Jeremy. I know what you mean. I think it's an interesting background today. Let's have a look. Yeah. It's like 1970s. Oh, I'm really bleached out, aren't I? Let's put a little bit of the light down. Doop, 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 doop. Doop, doop, boop. Oh, no, that's not right. I'm still very bleached out, I made sod all difference sod all we're so rude as humans sod is such a dirty word there we go look a little bit more human now oops okay let's go back to the questions hello Ke hello lisa nice listening to you hi kevin i would love you to share something i would love to share something can i call Yes, Kevin, you can. I'm just going to, because I've just spoken on the telephone, I'm just going to take a few more of the written questions just to break it up a bit, and then we shall speak, Kevin. Hi, Megan. Hi, Lisa. So wonderful to see you again. Is there any way you could touch on the general subject of why people are the way they are? I know we all have certain conditioning that primes us to behave the way we do, but could you just touch on what motivates human behavior? Is why people do bad things or hurt others? Sure, Megan. Megan. Well, it's only this body's um, um, this body's um, idea, like it's not truth, obviously. <laughs> like what I say isn't fact. I think you know that. Um, don't know why I said that, <laughs> but it's only my conclusion, this body mind's conclusion, which ultimately is the word of God. But everybody's word of God is even somebody that's sitting there like shit, manga, fuck this, I hate life, da -da 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 -da. everything. It's the word of God. Um, but so this is just my per perception of what's happening is the reason that. Um, people behave the way they do is um, well it's quite complex that answer it's not something I can just touch on but so first of all the primary functioning of humanity is to survive and we've kind of, it's like a rock, like being shaped by the ocean. So our survival has kind of been shaped by everything that we've touched upon in this life. Um, which is really beautiful. And it's kind of carved out this behavior of humanity. So that's our primary um, motivation for everything. And then what we've got to part next to that is this ability to have complex thinking. And then what's happened in most of humanity is they've identified with complex thinking. 
So all the other animal world, they're not identified with being the body. They don't think I'm a body and I'm a good person or I'm a bad person. They, they just are and they're responding to the environment, whereas humanity identifies with that. Um, and then once you identify with that, there becomes these very complex and weird thought processes that go on. You get all these um, like layers on top of your initial impulse. I don't think um, like so bad action doesn't necessarily come from identification. So if there was a war now and people were going to war and fighting, more than likely in general I wouldn't participate. But if I was here and somebody was, say, tor torturing my loved ones or anyone in front of me, I would participate and maybe I could kill. Like, maybe I could kill somebody. If I think I could if they were killing people around me. Um, so I don't... So I don't think that... I think that's a very animal reaction as well like a very basic animal reaction. I think if I was starving, I could also steal as well. Um, so, so I think that there is like a basic human behavior that's not to do with identification. And then you get the identification, you get all this seeking, and then you get all, all these bizarre behaviors that come on top of seeking. Um, and there's like all different varieties of it, but it all happens in similar patterns, which is super fascinating. So as to why people do bad things um, and harmful and hurtful things, um, is it tends to be um, either in the moment you lose control, so you're identified and you're having an argument with someone, you lose control and you sort of kill them, you know, you hit them really hard or something, you just lose your temper and you shoot them if you have a gun or whatever it is, and it's not premeditated. And that is one crime, like you lose control of yourself. And the same with saying hateful things, you kind of lose control of yourself and you just stir it out of your mind in the anger. And the extent of that anger, I would say, comes from separation. So that intensity of that anger or that hatred comes from separation. But it's an in-the-moment thing. And then when that emotion's calmed down, you regret what you've done. So there's that. Then you get this other type of behavior, which is premeditated, and which is what our society would define as evil. Um, but there's no body that's evil. There's just action that you could maybe define as evil, but... On the ultimate level, there is no good and bad, but it comes from being separate, and then it's a premeditation. And that is um, basically all those things, like all the bad things that you could do, and you premeditate it. So getting power over someone, uh, being better than someone, putting other people down to make yourself feel better, taking things from people in a premeditated way, not as in like stealing, but premeditated as in trying to get power or trying to get revenge or not doing it out of desperation, but doing it out of a form of nastiness, taking life, raping, torturing people, all these types of things, these premeditated thing, things. And they tend to be about the person feeling powerless and then trying to get power. So I'm not talking about torture that's doing it for a government that's, a government that's instructed to do it. I'm talking about an individual that does these things in order to obtain power to get feel better about yourself. And then I think that behavior, when you're identified, happens um, more, it, it's more, so that happens in the personalities that have more or less empathy. So if you have less empathy, you'll have more of a tendency towards that behavior. If you have more empathy, you'll find it hard to stomach that type of behavior. Um, 
and um, and people do it in all types of way, consciously and unconsciously. So it can be in passive aggression, can be in giving people a silent treatment or trying to make people feel guilty. There can be such a variety of it. I remember when I was like, I'll give you an example of doing something like on this evil scale. And I don't know how much I do this, but it could be unconscious, could be unconscious that I do do things like this now, but I don't know if I do, but um, I remember when I was um, seven years old and because of my dyslexia, I got sat, sat like on the dunce table and then I got sat next to the girl that nobody liked who was difficult in class. And, um, and I was really fed up that I had to sit on this table and next to this girl that, that wasn't very nice and was kind of a reject from class, which isn't nice that that happened to her. And I remember I was feeling angry and I rocked the table and I could see this, she had this pencil case that she really liked and it was made of plastic, but it was hard plastic. And I rocked the table purposely so it fell off and then it fell off and it smashed on the floor. And, um, and then I felt rotten. Like that is pre, that's premeditated, like evil behavior. And I felt really rotten that I did that. Um, and we and we do this often, like so we'll set pe people up, or humans will set people up, like and then they'll stab at them with nasty comments, um, or they'll just do things to make the other person feel bad, like do things maybe to get the, your partner jealous, like all of these are more premeditated things, and it predominantly comes from lack of empathy, and it's wanting to get power. Um, and that wanting to get power is different from survival power. It's like a seeking power because we'll do that in nature, like we'll try and overcome our environment in order to survive. So it's different from that. It's like this other premeditated based on your ego power, like based on your separate self, like it's you as a separate person trying to get power for you to become more mighty as an image of yourself. And this is where humans like fuck each other up. My God. And I think people do this um, a lot in relationships, like not consciously, like doing passive aggressive things, um, trying to dominate people with violence, um, putting people down, beating people and like relishing in the other person, like failing, like not enjoying your own success, but relishing like, <laughs> look at you, you fuck up. Like trying to, and this is all about image of self and you trying to have this flake, conflated image and we can all feel it. We know it from storytelling that it's this evil kind of trying to get power. It's not like, um, a gorilla like beating its chest that looks after its family and is like this is my land for my family it's like that's a beautiful kind of power where it's like rah and I would give up my life to save my family it's not that kind of power it's like this <laughs> power it's like this ego fake power that's like like um hurting another in order to feel powerful it's like a weak form of power um and, and we, I think that we infect each other with it because, you know, we, we do it to each other like a mother will, if, say if a mother has a really attractive daughter, will then put the daughter down or make the daughter feel small because they feel insignificant. Or the dad that's afraid of the son becoming stronger than him will put the son down in order for them to feel better about themselves. But this happens a lot in society, I think. And it's so damaging to be in these scenarios for each other. Like it's so damaging and it's rarely acknowledged in society. And it all comes from being separate, this type of behavior. Um, and it's like habits of separation and, and being in a separate society. And our society is kind of based on it, like a lot of our humor is based on this. 
like putting other societies down, putting other cultures down. We are better. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> that's my perspective on that. <laughs> I don't know if I answered your question. <laughs> Thank you for your question, Megan. Um, and the solution to it, because we should always be solution based, is um, empathy and understanding yourself, like understanding why you act and seeing if your action is coming from expansion or it's coming from contraction. Because doing evil things to each other, doing nasty things to each other normally always comes from contraction. And it doesn't benefit you. It makes you feel worse in the long run. It's like a fake power lift. It's, it's, it's not expansive. So the solution is coming by knowing who you are on the ultimate level, that you aren't a thing. And then also just becoming conscious of your motivations on the human level and seeing that the way in which life moves is, or the way in which a healthy life moves is moving towards what, that which is expansive, like love, beauty, not towards that which is contractive and dark, contracted and dark. Yeah. Hi, Gus Davo, Gustavo. Hello, this is Gus from somewhere. I do meditate and looking for myself and looking for myself and at the same time thinking about buy, thinking about buying stuff. I'm not sure if it is a contradiction. <laughs> well, you know, it's okay to buy stuff depends on you know what energy if it comes from an expansive place fantastic go it from go for it if it comes from like a needy contracted like ego space where you're trying to buy it to make yourself appreciated by people more like if it comes from a more contracted space then maybe not so good hello alexandra Hi Lisa, thank you for your pointing. I would like to ask you how to deal with gaslighting from world. Grew up in a family where I got gaslighted and now I feel get triggered all the time. How to be, how to clear out the body from it forever if possible. Many thanks and much love. So I don't know, I'm not an expert but in this situation, but um, for me, someone that gets gaslighted tends to have high empathy levels and the way that it works is that People talk you out of the way you feel often through using your empathy or using your um, indecisiveness. So a great way to counteract that is for you to really understand what it is you want and following that, your internal wants and your body and your feelings rather than external wants from other people. So it's really understanding what it is that you want. My wants tend to come from the solar plexus. It's also all the chakras, but that tends to be more the place of choice making and decisions. Like, what is it you want? You know, you're gaslighted so easily when you don't know what you want and when you're prioritizing empathy over your wants. And this often comes from feeling ashamed of what you want, feeling like you're not allowed what you want, being talked out of your wants. The body has all the answers. And then at the same time, also, seeing that none of that's you and that you're not the doer, that who you are is this presence and who they are is this presence and everything that your parents and family have done to you is an act of God as much as anything else. There is on the ultimate level no good or bad, they're not wrong or right, they're simply a product of this divine play of things. Thank you for your question. Hi Tanya. Hi Lisa, thanks for letting us have a piece of your wisdom. No sarcasm. <laughs> There's a game I play against my mind recently. Every time my mind says something negative, like I hate my boss, especially when he is screaming, I turn against my mind saying, no, I love my, ma my boss because he teaches me self-control and resilience. I do that thousands, thousand times a day. Maybe I am crazy, but I like the game of me against mind. And then I go back to the question, who is this me who goes against my mind? Now oh, that's really beautiful. I think this is a really like healthy way to view everything. It's like seeing 
that um, on the human level, the most wisest decision is to go to that which is expansive. And sitting there saying, I hate my boss because he's screaming is going to make you feel contracted and tight. And then to go towards the positive. Like if you can remove yourself from people that are like not behaving appropriately, that's great. But if you can't, then your best attitude is seeing everything as an opportunity to um, grow. And this is something that you teach yourself, just like right, learning to ride a bike or learning a new language. But you also see at the same time that that is something that's happening. It's not a separate you that's doing it. So just like now, if I were to teach you to bake a cake, there isn't a person in that that does that. It's the same with changing your mind and changing your attitude. That is a happening. It isn't you that's doing it because who is this you that does it? And then you see that, that all of that is playing out in this big expansive presence that doesn't belong to anyone and yet is all things. Everything is arising out of that. So your boss is screaming is arising out of that. The murders, the beauty, the sunrise, all of it's arising out of that and is that. And this is unconditioned love. Thank you for your question. Thank you for your question. At all. Hi, Lisa. I want to know that is there some kind of subtle memory in the ultimate being or absolute awareness? Because to keep record of or remember of all comings and goings requires some kind of subtle memory. Please put some light on it as I listened that absolute awareness doesn't have any property. If that's the case, so how it knows, remembers about all comings and going? I'm a bit confused with that, so please enlighten me. Okay, at all, I will. It's very simple. The brain has the memory. Consciousness has no memory. So it needs a body-mind in order to have a subtle memory about the comings and goings of things. But consciousness has no memory, but it produces a brain that does, that helps the functioning. Without the brain, there wouldn't be able to be the experience of life. So the body-mind is important to be there, to have this complex brain in order to see all these things. But... The brain isn't experiencing, the brain isn't the creator of this world, it's being created by consciousness, but it's creating through the brain, and then everything is a projection of the brain. So you're walking through, on the human level, your brain. You think you're walking through a world, but you're not, you're walking through the avenues of your neural pathways. Isn't that miraculous? And you're like, mm -hmm. don't like that, don't like that. What, who? You don't like your brain? That person's an asshole. It's a part of your brain. An asshole part of the brain. Hi, Jerome. Hello, Lisa. Thank you for the joy that is very beautiful. With pleasure, Jordan. Since a few months, there is a lot of working on the chakra system that has been done. It brings great fruits, but I find myself in a difficult situation. I work as an osteopath, and when my patients are very unbalanced on the energy level, my body acts like a sponge, and it seems even if I keep doing work on the chakra system, it isn't enough to clean the energy. I find myself in hell for a few, few days sometimes. But me. I love my work, but sometimes I feel it keeps my body too much in disbalance. I suffer from the situation. If you have any advice, please love to hear it. P.S. When we are lost in the illusion. I also heard you're going to get married a few streams ago. Congratulations with a beautiful gift of life to share it with someone you can trust. Thanks, Jordan. Now that I'm hearing you, perhaps it's part of that flip-flopping. I find really difficult to understand what's happening. Everything is changing so much in life since the moment of affinity has struck me and then has apparently closed. Hi, John. I definitely think that if you're an empath, you pick up other people's feelings. And, um, the, and, and, and you do act like a sponge for other people's feelings. The suffering comes, though, when you identify with it and you don't want their feelings and you believe... Oops, that 
they are taking away your freedom. So it's seeing that feelings aren't yours, that they're simply feeling that's coming and appearing in your body. And it's not you. And it's just knowing as an empath that you pick up other people's feelings. But then it triggers in you this, ah, I don't want painful feelings, take away the pain. And, and if there can just be a letting go and a surrender of it, it will pass through when it's ready. And you just give it, you know, space in the body. And it is part of the flip-flopping, like you have this opening and then you have pain and then you feel all closed and then it passes. It's just taking nothing personal, that nothing in life is you. Who you are is this moment and then things come and go and you don't know what's what, or who's is yours or theirs. It's just coming and going. But on the human level, I do acknowledge that you act as a sponge. But at the end of the day, whose feelings is whose? It's happening in consciousness. It's happening in presence. So it's just letting it come and go and come and go. Nothing is personal. Thank you, Jordan, for your question. Wow. Hi, George. Maybe I'll type the question. Maybe I've experienced my true self a few times. It is a state of, oh my God, I also tend to cry a lot and I start feeling that the movements of the body are just a flow. It's not me moving my hands, my head, my body. The feeling that everything that I am and that almost everyone is, is just a game, an illusion. At the same time, I have the feeling that everything is okay because we are that. So we have to awaken in, in it, to come back to it. So all that is left in the moment, love, crying, dancing, love and compassion. But this tends to kind of fade away. Don't get me wrong, my life has changed a lot. I have changed really quick patterns that were there since I was a teenager, years and years of believing the same story. But my question, I guess, would be, how was your experience when you started to awaken? I awake, started to awakening. I feel that I have kept observing the attachment and my beliefs and just relax because this might be another game of my mind trying to seek, trying to get somewhere. My question was how to live in it. I mean, we are it, but the person tends to blur the real experience. I think that's related to the last question of just seeing that um, that, that nothing is you. So just letting these karmas and these conditions come up. I think like, so one of the teachers that really helped me with this was Tony Parsons, as in, like I had this expectation, I came from Buddhism and I had this expectation that when I awakened, I would be like this perfect human that was always like, um, um, and, um, and I, was, I feel really blessed of hearing him and this other teacher called Nathan Gill at the time, that just put no conditions and restrictions on the human, you know, and would say, Blame can happen, anger can happen, um, joy can happen, frustration can happen, worry can happen. Like, there's no restrictions on it. They didn't make out that I would be a perfect human. And like, this is such a great, great teaching because why, the reason is, is most of the time what we're looking to be is be a perfect human. So we never have conflict. Um, but other people think we're wonderful because if you're always happy, everyone's like, woohoo, depression is wonderful. If you never have like any conditions, so you become like a superhuman. And it is like an ego trip. It's what this is, is absolutely surrendering into what you are in every moment. It's not being something. So it's like being absolutely unknown, like just letting it come into existence, even if that is a person that's trying to be kind or trying to be something. It's seeing that none of it is who you are and it's a play of this person. You can have ideas like um, to um, expand and to change and to like, let go of old patterns. So that's beautiful and it's kind to your neighbours. It's like picking up your litter. Um, 
or spraying perfume after you've been for a big dump in the toilet. But it's, that's not the goal of it because at the end of the day, this includes imperfections, it includes sadness, it includes um, anger, it includes frustration, it includes old patterns, it includes everything. It's not about you becoming enlightened and you becoming something. It's about the shift to seeing that who you are is not a thing, not a thing. And yet all of that's appearing in you. That's so wonderful, so wonderful. That's so amazing. But the, but the mind is always like, but maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I'm not getting it. Maybe da, 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 da. the person will never get it. That's just a play happening in nothing. It's not it. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you. So I said I'd give Kevin a good quick go and there's all these other questions, but I'm not going to see them. So just, hi Carmela, lots of love. Monique, Mukta, Thomas, Alexandra, Otto, Nat. But uh, I won't answer those questions. I just give Kevin and then we are done. Kevin. Hello, what's up, Lisa? Hey, um, I didn't know what's up is always a very funny thing for an English person, like not an American, but an English, because we take that question very seriously. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's um, it's be, good for an American, but for an English serious, person, yeah. we're like, oh, what is up? Well, um, I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. How how are you? It's so hard for me to get into WhatsApp. What's up? And when I I did um university in America, and I finally by the end of my six months there, I could finally go. What's up? Back. That all you have to say is what's up. <laughs> what's up? Back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's what's it? Know, so what's up, Kevin? Yeah, I wanted to call you because uh, I found it very interesting. Uh, the title. Are yeah. you a lemon or, or a lime? <laughs> And uh, yeah. it made me reflect about the fact that sometimes uh, uh, me, myself, in my journey, I found myself uh, excluding things, uh, part of my expression, you know, because I have a passion for business and also for spirituality. So sometimes I had the identification uh, and I had the difficulty in integrating different expression uh, of uh, the human aspect of myself. Yeah. And... Uh, Thanks to non-duality, I'm uh, experiencing more and more uh, uh, the state of awareness where all of these different things uh, are included. So yeah. I'm, I'm aware that uh, I'm not uh, the lemon and that I'm not the lime, uh, but I'm also <laughs> aware that, uh, you know, are just happenings uh, into uh, that space that I am. So. Yeah. I don't have any more that rigid structure, you know, mm. where uh, I am in business mode and then I'm into the spiritual mode. I realize that uh, at the human level, I can express myself in different way, but mm. at the core, I'm a modeless. I don't have like uh, this strong identification. Yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah, and it's it's not this way or that way. You're not this thing or that thing. I remember when I was younger, I always used to struggle, like this is going to sound really silly, but I was used to struggle going through my different personality types. So like being the sexy Lisa with the boyfriend or being the funny Lisa or being the nice Lisa or being the empathy Lisa or being the activist Lisa or the daughter Lisa. And it used to really be a conflict for me going from one to the other because I felt like I needed to be something solid. And, and the more that you get into non-duality, it's like you just allow these different sides to, to come up and they can just be really spontaneous. And you could be you could be sexy and then you could be funny and then you can be daughter or like partner or whatever it is and just flow from one to the other. And it it's not um, it's not a big deal. You don't have to be something solid. 
You, you just yeah. are what you are in every moment. It's appearing and it's for other people to interpret. If other people want to say you're a lemon and lime, then that's down to them. Uh, true. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. And I love the fact that, uh, yes, you talk about non-duality. You talk about this awareness that is nothing. But you address uh, the human level, as you call it, as well. And, uh, yeah, in my experience, this is indeed true. Because sometimes they are... Uh, the things that are no progress uh, are, can be made. And I think that is true because at the end we are really complete. But at the human level, we can make progress. Uh, and uh, me as a kid, I used to be very shy, you know, mm -hmm. and I couldn't talk with nobody because I was so identified uh, into this character, into this persona. And uh, these teachings helped me a lot into dissolving uh, this blockage on uh, the human level and made me realize that I was more than shy. And from yeah. there, I started to actually own on a human level uh, uh, more than that. I actually started to express this. And from shy, I started to become more social. And uh, so it's very funny to see yeah. how this uh, non-dual thing that at the end is nothing can yeah. really, quote-unquote, improve our human experience in so yeah, many totally. aspects. I yeah, actually, yeah, I it, yeah. Yeah, actually, yeah. I heard you about, talk before about the fact that uh, we create out our reality in our own mind. So uh, it's really all our reflection of uh, this reality, what we hold inside. Yeah. So, yeah, that's fantastic. Nice. Oh, well, thank you for phoning in and saying all that. That's really yeah. beautiful, Kevin. And I like, I like the way you yeah. brought it back to the lemon and the lime. Like, the reason I actually yeah. named it that was because I was in a hurry and, um, and the uh -huh. curtain... Um, that I'm sitting next to. Uh, you can't, I don't think you can see this, but you can see it later on Ustream. It's got lemons and limes on it. So I would look at it and I was like, huh, are you a lemon or a lime? Uh, <laughs> so that's nice. awesome. It's lovely to connect, Lisa. Thank you yeah. very much. Thanks. Yeah, you too. Thanks, Kevin. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay, my lovelies, that is the end for this evening. Um, I wish you a beautiful week and I shall see you next Sunday at 6 p.m. French time. Au revoir. Tschüss. Goodbye. Avida Sein. May the force be with you.